Monday, happy Monday. Hey, I Anta. Kai, I Anta. Hey, Shani. How are you? I am good. I am so just in case if y'all haven't noticed, do you see that she's she's wearing a different main look this <laughs> Monday? Oh, I like that. I like that. I like a that. main look. Okay. She's trying to change it up on us. So I try, to, us I try, to, try to... something new. Right. You're looking like a Nubian queen, like a, a real, I mean, you are like an African queen, you know, coming through, you know, you the one usually throwing a hat, you know, all of that. And so I that you right the, except, except Mia has to give me a tutorial on how to use them. No, I don't have a relationship. The funny thing is I don't have a relationship with Taylor. I have a relationship with your hair. I don't have a relationship with the braids. I've only had these type braids like once when I was in my twenties. This is my second time. So I don't know how to put it up. I don't know how to keep it out of my face. I don't know how to maintain my scalp. I don't know how to do anything. So Mia is teaching me because she gets braids often how to have a relationship with the braids. And that's what I keep saying. I got to get a relationship with these braids. So I keep filling them to get the relationship. It's, but it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. But well, listen, well, you working out. So tell them why you got this special look going on. Well, it's Mia is turning 16 this week and um, we're on vacation. And but of course, I still wanted to come and get this done. <laughs> Mia's turning 16. She's and turning Mia didn't 16. want a party, probably because she's had a party for every milestone. That's probably a real story. She wanted to go out of town. She wanted to go to Africa, but of course, you know, we can't leave the country. So we yeah, get that the next next thing, we're out of town. So yeah. Okay, this well, is why you I have the braids. Well, it looks very nice. I love the look on you. I love the look on you. So last week we had such a very interesting show. We got a lot of comments, a lot of feedback. And I think one of the biggest feedbacks from last week's show was that people didn't really know what WAP stood for. So if you're looking and you don't know what WAP stands for, which are the initials of Cardi B's song, I'm going to tell you guys now, just go on the web and type in WAP Cardi B and still comment to us about what you think because we had so they many know. people they right know. some people so many people were commenting like okay so oh I didn't know what that really stood for right so the conversation yeah, was so good we wanted to really do a part two yeah today yeah you know and, and so we're gonna do a part two but today we decided to forego our part two of our Cardi B WAP uh, can hear me classify as ghetto conversation to talk about something more, uh, something that we saw on Good Morning America. Yeah, and we kind of teased it. We were on um, the movement with Dr. F. Keith Slaughter, Uncut. Um, you have to go and check out his show. It's really good. Um, so we were we we're on there and we we're on there regularly. So we kind of talked about it there and got a lot of feedback. So we wanted to make sure that we talk about it with you because it's important to us that we talk about what's going on in our community, not Good Morning America. Like they can talk about it, but we want to be the voice and we want to be the source of the information and the source of the conversation and not someone else giving us our narrative to first tell us what's not nice, what's not good, and then what, what is good. So in, instead of having someone else tell us how to control our narrative about our hair, we want to talk about it so we can control our narrative and we can talk about what's going on amongst us so we can kind of just derail things before they get too far. Right, right. So uh, Good Morning America did, I think Janae, which is one of the newscasters, pitched a story called Texturism. Mm -hmm. And texturism by definition, I'm taking your stance, texturism <laughs> by definition is favoring or praising black hair with looser, finer, Final curl patterns is generally associated with mixed and biracial women, but of course, that's not always the case. So it's those in our own community looking down or snubbing their nose to someone with a tighter curl pattern, cur, cur, uh, a tighter curl pattern, mm -hmm. but 
praising and thinking, okay, it's back to the good hair syndrome, right? That if you have a looser curl pattern and it's more wavy, that your hair is better. Or or or, or the brown paper bag thing. And it's it, but but for me, <laughs> being being a chocolate girl, I actually have a t-shirt that says I love my dark skin, right? Uh, you, you, you know, it, it is it is horrible that we have to keep talking about this because I meet so many little girls every day that who's insecure uh, and 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 intimidated and don't like their beautiful dark chocolate skin, right? And I can't say the world, so I, you know, I just when I see them, I say you're beautiful. But right. now we're getting into and 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 and. Now we're getting to this whole thing about not only we, we've kind of managed this a little bit about our skin with colorism, but now we're talking about texturism. And now we have Good Morning America saying that it's us. We're fighting amongst each other, you know, because they like to say that, right? Mm -hmm. But some of it is the truth, right? We're fighting amongst each other now about our hair and the texture of our hair. So first it was they want us to embrace their hair, right? They want us to embrace their different styles. But now that we're embracing it, they're not embracing it, right? So what we need to talk about is what we need to do amongst ourselves because some of the people that are listening, you know that you have been, you're guilty of calling hair nappy, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. guilty of saying this person has good hair. I mm -hmm. swear if I had just $5 for every time somebody said somebody has good hair, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I, would, I would be a millionaire. Like seriously, people say this all the time and it really, it's kind of like, I hear you. Yeah, you know how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like I hear you. When you say I hear you, I, I hate it. But but when people say when they have good hair, like because good hair is relative, like what the heck is good hair, right? That's how we got into all this. And now we're having white media control our narrative by saying, you guys are fighting, you know, you got but you need to get my mouth. Fix it, fix it, people. Thank right, you. but it's but it's sad. Remember when the natural hair movement came out? We were actually, you know, on WAOK -okay with you know Keith Slaughter. Remember, well, we actually were on. Our, we had our own show on WAOK -okay, uh, mm -hmm. every week, Main Talk. Mm -hmm. And I remember having so many conversations with women, and we were talking about the natural hair Nazi. When the natural hair movement came out, we automatically started embracing and feeling good about our natural hair. But then we still went to the left. And we started talking about people who decided not to go natural. So what is or, it? Or 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 or, that, or 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 people who went natural and, and still press their hair, right? Right. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like we you you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the as you you would always say when we were on the radio every week, and it used to just drive me bizonkers about post traumatic stress, post traumatic stress. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. Get over it. Get yeah. over it. But it seems like in our community, we always find some way that if we embrace something like our natural hair, like you just said earlier, that the Crown Act was passed across- In the House, it's passed in the House. The so Crown we have gone to the Senate to get passed. And so we don't have to keep individualizing the states once it get passed um, in the Senate. Okay, so, so but again, so, okay, so we have that and that's just so that we can go to work and wear our hair however we wanna wear it. It won't be discriminated of course, without finances yeah. right and, and won't be discriminated against it but however we're discriminated against each other mm -hmm. so first it was like i said first it was like you're not natural natural which is your your biggest pet peeve <laughs> yeah that you yeah. you wear your natural hair and yeah. you decide to press it out or mm -hmm. for me i decide to wear a texturizer and i'm looked down on by the natural hair nazis okay so now we have women who are all natural and now we have texturism because now we're looking down on those who have tighter curlier hair or 4C, 4B, or anything in a four category. You got to have you, the, the 3A, 3B, the mulatto type okay, hair. Okay, so see, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not clear on that because, you know, I don't do what you guys do. So what is like one, two, three, and four? Like, what is four? So, so, so four is the, the tighter, tighter curls. Hmm. So it's like real kinky, curly hair. So... 4C is like the tightest, like Kunta Kente, if you would like to say, mm -hmm. right? Okay, I like so Kunta Kente and I like Kunta Kente hairs. So. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just giving an example. Yeah, no, yeah, no, you're giving a definition. And I, I, or like I buckwheat, or like buckwheat, okay? So 4C, uh -huh. buckwheat, Kunta Kente, same category. Then, you know, you move down from C to like 4A, and then it's still kind of like, it's a ray. You know what I'm saying? It's still tight, but you know, a little loose. When we get into the three category, we start talking about kids that are mixed. 
So if you like 3A, you may have like, uh, you know, like uh, the girl Yardis on Blackest. You know, mm. like it's more a looser natural curl. Some of the curl patterns like uh, Mariah Carey, you know, she- Well, falls. that's what they were talking about on Good Morning America. I mean, they, they actually had pictures and they actually used examples. And they said that the ladies that, that in our community, is what they said, go look up the article yourself. It's, it's out there. In our community, we are now are favoring, if you will, women with looser curls and are saying that women who have tidal curls should not have these tidal curls, right? But I, I don't even know if I was bothered more about the the whole texturism thing, or if I was bothered more about someone giving us our narrative, right? You know, about what we're doing. And you probably went to a small sect, uh, a small sect of people and, and they were having a problem and now you made this big report and now you're putting it in our heads because that's what they do, right? And so now we're doing it more, but we do know that we do that, right, Deshaun? Because the people are saying me, I'm not natural, natural. And I, right. and I know everybody can't, be me but you know what i say if you're not gonna die for me you can't live for me so right. you guys have got to stop doing it because some of us are doing it you got to stop and we have to correct the ones who are doing it don't allow I mean i don't mean to say don't do this i mean don't allow it to be in your presence right i miss out on a lot of things in the family because they know you can't even call me with this freaking gossip because i don't want to hear because i'm an optimist right so if we start shutting people down in our community, we can control our narrative and we can fix us. That's not well, good. You know, I, and you, us, you, so and you, I mean, well, you know, the whole Good Morning America piece to me was that when we look at Janae, the one who brought it out, she's in the three B category. She doesn't have four C. You know, her curls are uh, beautifully defined and the locks are big and she can be on there with her natural locks. But if you go back to the other reporter, remember we talked about her, she started trying to go natural. We was kind of like, well, it seemed kind of funny. Her hair just couldn't, she just needed like a cut or something like that. But her curls were a little bit more tighter. And so now that she has the cut, it looks a little bit better. So it's kind of like the texturism is, it's acceptable on television if it is more, you know, mulatto looking versus more tight or curly. But this just doesn't happen between us you know, it also happens in the salons. You, it also happens in the salons that, you know, customers will come to the salon and you have the stylists who don't really know how to, you know, service a client with a tighter curl pattern. You know, you, I, have you, you, know, what, you know what, but you know what, kudos to, kudos to, kudos to Nutris. And you know, I don't even do this often because, you know, even if you're not there, you know, um, one of your stylists would be like, listen, this Kai hair, this how she like it, this what she want to do. You can't be scared of Kai's hair, right? Because I know y'all think my hair is straight, but when that water hit, it is tight. But I mean, I'm good with that. But 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 there, but he tells them you can't be intimidated by her hair. You got to go in there and you got to be able to manage it, right? So that's what we need. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Deshaun. I just wanted to No, 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 but no, but that's but that's good because it's all about training. So you know, I wanted to have this conversation. Well, we both, well, you you was like, we need to go ahead and have this conversation. So uh, this past weekend, I guess this whole texturism thing has kind of gotten out for those who had not seen it on Good Morning America had gotten out. And I saw one of the uh, licensed cosmetologists who is deemed as the texture, what did she say? The texture. Uh, we'll, the let, we'll, we'll, we'll let her tell it. We'll let her tell it. Right, the, the, the queen like the of the hair texture. coach and then the texture queen. That's what <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we're gonna bring her on. We're gonna bring Key in. Key is uh in uh Detroit, Michigan, and she is Key. What what do what what, what Hi, do Key. You? Hey, you, thank you for you joining us. What, what do they call you? The texture, what is it? Texture specialist. Oh, te text. Texture well, I made you the queen, so you're going to be the texture queen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> well, Key, well, Key, Thank you. well, Key, I was looking this weekend and I saw what you were talking about and you were really talking to the licensed cosmetologist, but it, it fit right into our conversation today about texturism. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about how licensed professionals have taken on the same aura of not really understanding or not wanting to deal with women of different textures right yeah so what so give us your thoughts on that what, you ready to talk about it she's like hmm. 
yeah, yeah. It's so we, much we, to say, but I'm gonna stick with what the video you the video you oh, see. No, go ahead on. We got we have 15 minutes. Go ahead. Okay. We have people, we have people who are um, watching, who are natural, who um, you know, when we had Darius on two weeks ago, remember Kai, uh -huh. you know, his whole thing was that you know, women when they went natural decided not to go to the salon. Like mm -hmm. they felt like it was something they could do at home, and then they yeah. became frustrated with it. And so his whole you know, thought process is just because you're natural doesn't mean you need to, you know, cut the salon out of your hair diet. Come in and let us show you how to right tame your how curl. to deal with your hair. Right. And how to make it beautiful. But mm -hmm. now here you're talking about it's you know to find a salon is far few in between because if you come in with your hair looking like buckwheat, you may be told, I'm out. Mm -hmm. The since I've been so just to get a little bit of history, I'm key and I started in Atlanta, Georgia, but my home base is Detroit. That's where I reside right now. And coming back here, I was blessed and fortunate to work in a salon called Textures by Nefertiti. Mm -hmm. um, I do now have my, I have a private suite and I was the only licensed professional at that salon. Everyone else was natural hair culturist. And I learned from them, they learned from me, but also- I'm in sorry, the, can, can you tell us, can you tell our audience the difference between the two? Um, a natural hair culturist, literally, they only deal with natural hair with braiding, locks, and they get trained on sanitation. Now, it's just a certification. A lot of people don't hold that. A lot of states don't recognize that. Michigan and Georgia actually recognize that. That means right. that in legislation, they fought for that to have some type of um, certification because we do, for our African sisters come from the continent, who are, they brave for a living. That's tradition for us as black women. And they come over here, but they don't know how to sanitize and keep um, salon space as it should be, shampooing the hair, understanding hair care and scalp. So mm -hmm. they'll, they'll learn, they'll be certified within the first 300 hours under those, those different things. Master cosmetologists, we know everything. <laughs> Just to kind of put it, we... We're doing Chemical. hair, we're doing aesthetics, we're doing nails, we're doing barbering, we're doing hair care, scalp, anatomy, chemistry. All of that is what a cosmetology embodies. And um, me going into the salon, I love the atmosphere because it taught me a lot. But also, I also seen that my sisters who were totally gifted, y'all was lacking a little bit of something. Just mm -hmm. as far as sat when it came to sanitation and guidelines. But they had appreciation for texture and hair care. And... I also saw that it's easier ways to do different things. Starting, um, starting my, my brand in Atlanta, I was always cultivated around different hair textures and types. Being the hot Atlanta, people think that this is, they're not natural. They're not natural down there. Yes, they are. They're natural and they can wear their hair straight and they can flip flop to wearing their wave pattern as well. But it got to a point where you'll get the four types um, sisters and people be like, yeah, I, I can't do that though, Key. That's that they hair too nappy. Look, it's too dry. It's too this, it's too that. And I'm like, it's hair. Right. Like it's hair. And to hear a woman sit in your chair and they say, girl, my hair too nappy. That's why I wear a weave or I work in, you know, I, I have a professional career and I can't let my naps out, girl. They're going to look at me like I'm crazy. I'm only one of five black women in my industry or in my corporate office. And they're going to always, they're going to pick about me. And I, and I would get to the, the root of it. For me, it's always getting to the source. Who's picking on you? Who's saying something about you? Because I want to know, because I'm not in corporate America. I'm in a beauty industry. We do have corporate parts, but I'm not there. And let me have that, share that conversation with me because I'm sure that you're not the only sister who probably wants to be free of wearing braids, weaves, and relaxers to fit in. Mm -hmm. So they would say, it was us. Mm -hmm. I was like, what you mean? They was like, no, it's the other sisters. Mm -hmm. I had a sister, y'all, beautiful, articulate, smart. She's an engineer for GM, beautiful, educated mother, wife, sister. You would see her, she bring light into a room. She was in wearing weaves for 14 years just because she wanted to fit in. Mm. She said, I have to have this look key. She, and when she came and sat in my chair, the things that came out of her mouth is usually things that came out, will come out of my mouth to the client. 
She said, I've been in bondage for 14 years. I'm ready to be free. Somebody referred you to me and I'm ready to be set free and walk this path and embrace this kinky nappy hair and this, this, and that. And she went on and on. It was like coming out of her being. I was like, oh my God. I said, I usually say that to the client. I said, but seeing that you're in a place to receive all that's new to you, come on, let's go. And but, she, but Key, I'm sorry not to cut you off, but do you think, and and I Ian, I want you to chime in on this too. When we were on uh, the movement this last week and we were having this conversation with Keith Slaughter, remember one of the things that he said from a traumatic experience, what happened to him is that the people in his family mm-hmm. kind of deemed him mm-hmm. as not the good one because his brothers had more curlier, mm-hmm. beautiful locked hair. So yep. when, it, when it comes to who told you that, Yep. You know, it goes back to this whole conversation that we're having, texturism. It's someone inside of our own race, yes. inside yes. of our own family, yep. inside, you know, of our own circle who is saying that, girl, you need to uh, 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 cut them kitchens. Girl, you need to uh, straighten that. Girl, you need to press yep. that. And sometimes it's just in our own family. It so, is. You know, so now even from a salon standpoint, we now have stylists who don't know how to deal with this texture of hair. And it's not that they don't know how to deal with it. They haven't taken the time to- They don't want to train themselves. Right, or even or even by the tools, steamers, mm-hmm. you know, uh, flat irons that go up to, you know, still using irons in the stove, you know, mm-hmm. things like that, not really the training. So because where do we go? Some of them, are, some of them are, are just like some of the nail people just want to, just want to be in and out in the dollar. It's not really about the, the hair care, the taking care of the hair and taking care and learning the texture and building a relationship with your client's hair. Right. Yeah. So when you like, when you like, when you ladies say this about, um, you know, we, we talk about, we talk about hair relationships. We talk about post-traumatic stress because yes. it, it, is, it is a true thing. Right. Because mm-hmm. you, know, you already know we was bought over here and then mm-hmm. you already know, what, what the his, historians say, what's in the books. It ain't, it ain't, mm-hmm. it ain't what Kai say. It's, it's in the books. Is that if you're in, if you're in the, if you're in the field, you was this type of person is, versus if you was in the house. So right. that's not DNA, right? Mm-hmm. So now we get past what's on our DNA and we start to have our grandmothers, 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 right? Say, you got to do this to look pretty. You got to do this to yep. look pretty. I do this through pretty but you know it, and when you ladies were talking I was I was listening to you and it literally almost brought me to tears because it is so bad it is mm-hmm. it is so bad that mm-hmm. when people say you know that oh this person looks like this and this person looks like this and this person is dark and this person and you know and they always say you're so cute to be a dark girl mm-hmm. it's right you mm-hmm. it has to be somebody that says at some point that Confidence is built within even the stylist. Yes. They're, they're intimidated by someone with the hair, with the with the four C's of you, you ladies are saying. They're intimidated by that because they have this insecurity in their cells, right? And then they don't think that it's pretty. So they don't mm-hmm. think it's pretty. Media don't think it's pretty. Nobody thinks it's pretty, right? So mm-hmm. fortunate for me is my mom said, when I keep telling people this, that my mom, when I was little, she says, you're pretty. She treated me like yes. I was a song. So when I got up until, and it wasn't until I got to college, it wasn't even being from Mississippi. It was in college when they said, oh, you ugly. But I didn't know who they was talking about because my mama had already told me I was pretty. Do you understand? Was, so yes. we have to start breaking those generational curses. It is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Little girls don't feel like they're pretty if they mm-hmm. look like my complexion, right? If they mm-hmm. have hair like mine, they don't feel pretty. And we have mm-hmm. to stop that. But media, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Who wants yep. to control our narrative s- yep. say it to us? And then they get all these people who look like, you know, I, I had one of my doctor friends to tell me that I was, um, she told me that I was uh, uh, color struck, right? She said, you color struck, right? But I'm on the other end of the color. Struck. And, it's, mm-hmm. and it's because I have fought so, so long for little girls who look like me to say mm-hmm. that you're pretty, right? Mm-hmm. I thought so long that this may not seem to be attractive to me, right? Because I've never dated like, like, like a gal with a lighter complexion, right? Because that's not attractive to me. But she said, you, 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 you too have colorism. So now I gotta check myself, right? Not that I am, not that I'm doing it because of what the world is saying is pretty. And I'm saying, well, that ain't even pretty to me, right? So. Mm-hmm. We have to, within our own community, because this is what this is about, within our own community, start to break down, deal with the three-year-old us, the five-year-old yes. us, the eight-year-old yes. us, to get yes. to the adult. Because if you don't heal 
for that little girl, then she becomes an adult, right? Mm -hmm. Who's acting mm -hmm. like a kid who has not gotten over how your grandmother treated you Treat or you. how your grandmother treated you or how mm -hmm. your mother treated you in some cases, right? Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to get, I want, I want to get it. I want to I want Key to answer this. Key, for those who mm -hmm. are watching, because we, we on our final countdown, I told you the show go real fast. Somebody I'm just sorry. said the other day was like, just when y'all get started, y'all go. We, mm -hmm. I told them one day we're going to make it longer, just not today. But Key, for, for those who are watching, mm -hmm. if they walk into a salon and they feel uh, a bit of texturism, you know, how should the client handle that? Should they walk out the door? You know, with you being a texture expert, you're a texture expert. Mm -hmm. What should one do? Are there questions that customers should ask? What do you think? Is, should it be a pre, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Should it be a pre-interview? What? Like, like a, cons a consultation. I would say definitely do a consultation. If it's your first time sitting in a, a, per a client, a stylish chair, and you're looking for a natural style, your, your texture should be naturally styled. I would definitely do a consultation. Ask them, do they deal with my type, that your individual type of hair? And if you hear, um, yeah, um, yeah, but it, you know, you don't hear confidence or they haven't seen your page. Most of, you know, we have on social media now. So every stylist had their work. You see in variety, see a variety of what they can do. That stylist can do. Look at that, that stylist recommendations from the clients, read those recommendations. Don't just go off. Like Kai was saying, don't just go off what the media says and what I want this style. And, and if you don't, if it doesn't mesh well with you, I'm an energy person. I'm a spirit, you know, spirit being and it's like, if my energy don't mesh well, or if I don't see myself in that person's chair or you around me, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to get my money. You're not going to get my energy mm -hmm. because I don't think it's good for you to lay hands on my head. It's mm -hmm. my crown. I like, you know, that. I like that. And that's you feeding me what you're holding. And I'm not saying that he is perfect. He is still a work in progress, but to the point of hair and what I'm called to do in my, my ministry of hair, I know who I'm called to. The women who want to, and like um, Kai was saying, bring out the little girl, the little boy, and be confident in that. Mm -hmm. Let that person be free. Let that person be able to express who they are. Mm -hmm. And it's a process, ladies. Mm -hmm. It is a process. If you've been trapped, I'm, I have to say trapped, in bondage of wearing your hair a certain way to fit into a mold, whether it's coming from um, generational things or your job right now, it's like I said, it always goes back to a root. And if you're confident in knowing that this person can take me out of here, you want to have to allow that stylist to take you by your hand. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be times when, and I even talk to the stylist, it's going to be times when you be looking at that client like, okay, she don't get it. Right. And you have to be patient. You right. have to be patient with them. You have to keep giving them, feed them little, like you feed an infant, you know, give them a little bit of milk, <laughs> then yeah. gradually give them to some solid food, then give them to some you know, greens and kind of cornbread and all that. Don't be trying to give them cornbread and greens exactly. in three <laughs> That's months. Right. Right. You, know, you, know? you take a like, step by step. Like that. <laughs> but but you, 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 right? they got to build up to it. You got to right. build up to it. Some of them come in ready yeah. and that's, that's far and in between. The client I was telling you about was far and in between, but when they come in ready, I'll be here. I'm ready too. But you, Keith, as a professional, you got to be ready at every level. Key, mm -hmm. how do you feel about before we end and, and we're down to two minutes? How do you feel about? I noticed that a lot of women, uh, two things. We probably go over like three minutes because I, I need you to answer this. Two things. So a lot of women may listen to their stylist because they can't deal with their kinky coily hair, right, Kai? Mm -hmm. And so then they go into what they call a protective style, which you know I hate that. You know I hate that whole protective. And the definition of protect means to keep from her harm and danger, but then you get stuck in this mold of, you know, wearing this hair forever because you get custom, I mean, get comfortable versus one of the things that I love that you do as I watch your social media page is you use colors to mm -hmm. enhance the natural texture. Mm -hmm. But do so the question is, how do you feel about protective styles? And then part two, do you feel like lighting, you know, lightening your hair, your natural textured hair is a good alternative to soften the curl pattern to make it more manageable? Uh, yeah. Okay. Protective styles. First question. So I got a protective style, as y'all see. I put my protective I answered Kai does too. Kai does too. Why right. it for protective because I, I really don't like it. I got it for the vacation. <laughs> protective styles, I like them. Um, 
but I don't want you to, I don't want clients to be caught in them. Like therefore vacation or you about to go into a hard work month or something, you know, and not having them in two, three, four months. No, sis, you got a champ. It's a scalp. It's a scalp that's up under there. That is more important than that hair that's, that's coming right. out. That's a whole nother conversation, right. Deshaun. Oh, but <laughs> that, that part, I, I, I tell them, if you're going on vacation, it's the summer, you, you don't want to do your hair. Absolutely. Get a protective yeah. style. But I also, um, one thing that I... I do in my salon is my protective styles nine times. I don't do braiding. And people think, oh, you're a natural hairstylist. I say, no, I'm a mass cosmetologist. I do hair. <laughs> and they were like, oh, well, what's the difference? I said, I do your hair. So I'll braid your hair up. Y'all twist your hair up, flat twist it into a protective style that you can have two to three weeks with your hair. So you don't have to right. worry about synthetics, hair, bothering your scalp and all those different things. So that's a protective style to me. This is a protective style according to the media. But in the natural hair community, when we first, when we really started in the 90s coming out, we were doing our own hair. That's right. Twisting and braiding and straw setting and rotting. That's right. Those are protective styles. Right. When it comes to lightening and doing different things, what people get bored of their dull color. So yeah, I'm a blonde girl. I'm a love of platinum. And that's the color of my choice um on my natural hair and so yes i'll do those things but even in that conversation sean that can go farther people think oh i'm natural this is not and i can come in and get no mm -hmm. but was your scalp together is your hair strands together another consultation you don't want to sit in a chair and say because color is an investment investment mm -hmm. you have to be coming into that stylist who did that color and let them main maintain your scalp and your hair in that color as well so yeah that's very, very important. Your hair, your curls, hair will break off. It's, it's time. People yeah, don't like that time. Good. That time word. That word. And we don't like that. We want it right now. <laughs> oh, well, Keith, thank you so very, thank you so very much for coming on and yeah, joining Keith. this brief conversation. We have to have you back. We have to have you back. You know, I would love to to talk about this whole texture thing. Uh, texturism is real, y'all. Right? It is. Yeah, like it's real. Y Look, y'all saw me go hamburger, a Big Mac filet of fish. <laughs> right, and your mama, and your mama was on here. Your mama said, "You telling my beautiful queen?" <laughs> yes. Right, mama. Yes. She said, "You tell him." She on here typing in and stuff like that. Of course, Miss Aretha saying hello. Sunita said, "I have five different textures." Uh, Veronica, my LS said that she has five. Uh, no, she said that she has been shamed. You know, uh, looked down upon yep. with her hair. So again, in our community. You know, the word for the day, we're talking about texturism, but more importantly, we have to love ourselves and yes. then we can love first. each other. Yeah. Because yes. if you love yourself first, you'll automatically love each other, period. There we go. Let them kids say, period. Go. <laughs> or stop period. hating. Boom. Or stop hating. Because mm -hmm. if I look good with my nappy hair, um, give me my props. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. know, instead of saying something bad. So we got to love each other. So. Yeah. That's our show for today. Key, tell Thank everybody you, how to Key. get in contact with you. Oh, you can follow me at Key Essentials Hair on Instagram and on Facebook. And um, you get all my information there. Again, Key Essentials Hair on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you, Thank you, Key. ladies. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have, have a good night. Oh, you too. Y'all too. All right. We'll okay, talk bye soon. Bye-bye. Okay, oh, that was a good conversation. Yeah. I almost hit the lead button. It's not Listen, no, we don't want you to do that. That was a good conversation. Uh, well, that was really good. Thank you guys for watching. I am to y'all have a good rest of the trip. Uh, yeah. Happy 16th birthday again to, to the baby girl. Yeah. Happy 16th birthday, Nia. Happy 16th birthday. <laughs> you know, you got to get it in, got to get it in. Well, for those who are watching, thank you guys for investing your time with us for this 30 minutes. Drop your comments below. Follow us on Main Talk on air, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Let's build it up, and we'll be back next week. Same bat time, same mm -hmm. bat channel. With this some more narrative that we will control, right? Right, a narrative that we about our hair. This $9 billion industry. Mm -hmm. And if y'all have a topic 
y'all want us to talk about, drop that below too. Send us a DM on our social media page so we can talk about it. This is, this is the people's church. This is us the phone. I don't know. And let us know if y'all like it. People are saying they love this format. Let us know. Drop us a line below. Okay? Wrap it, snap it, weave it, lock it, braid it. Bye, Shani. Bye. Have fun. Be safe. Bye, y'all.